Welcome back to Two Crows Podcast. I'm your host, Tyler, and we have Jeremy with us today, other way. Hello. <laughs> I even practiced that. <laughs> uh, Jeremy's here to tell us some scary stories. But well, yeah, I don't know how scary they'll be, but they 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 will certainly be um weird. Weird and enlightening, I think, is what, what I'm okay. hoping for. So I've been warned that they might get scary though. There are some elements to it that could cause some disturbing thoughts, I guess. <laughs> well, you said things might happen. That is possible. Yeah, I was I was actually <laughs> discussing some of this stuff with uh, with my best friend uh, the other night, and um, just all of a sudden, she was like going to be she was going to be texting me back, and she said a, a metal cup that was up on a shelf just flew across the room. And um, when I had when a few nights ago, when I was talking to my uh, uh, my friend who is also <clears throat> excuse me, has become my spiritual counselor, um, she started she had a coughing fit and she couldn't stop for a few minutes. And, you know, it was just they they do not want us talking about this stuff. But and I'll, I'll explain why uh, as we get as we get further into the story. I also wanted to mention everybody that we're pushing Jeremy to be a voice actor <laughs> and uh, you will know while they're telling the story and you will agree with me, but they do a lot of readings of poetry and works on TikTok as well as other places, right? Yeah, I've started posting stuff on um, YouTube and I have been posting some stuff on Instagram. I, I need to kind of be a little more consistent with those other platforms, but I mean, the response that I began, I originally started on TikTok to promote my artwork. And now here I am. The bulk of what I do now is uh, poetry readings. And I mean, last night I did The Raven, which you mm -hmm. which which you thought was good. Um, yeah. So it's been, you know, it's been in, it's been enlightening. I've had a couple of professional voice actors uh, listen to my stuff and they were like, you know, I told them, I said, my friends have been pushing me to pursue this and they both have been. Yes, I agree with your friends. So yes. that's that's been a that's been a wonderful thing. And know? audiobooks. So yes. And I, I actually I actually am planning to do a reading for before Halloween. I'm actually planning mm -hmm. to do a reading of uh at the request of another friend, another TikTok friend, um, of Edgar Allan Poe's The Mask of the Red Death. That's one of my favorites. The one that I, I did that on here was my least favorite Poe work but it was mm -hmm. the most requested. So I'm like, okay, I'll read it. But I sound like I'm a horrible person who just killed a cat. But <laughs> I, um, I thought about doing the telltale heart, but that's the one that everybody does. So, and then when, sh when uh, my friend Kayla had uh, suggested a uh, mask of the red death, I was like, mm -hmm. yep. So I'll probably have to break it up into a couple of different videos yeah. on, on uh, TikTok, but YouTube, I'll end up, uh, I'll end up pushing the whole thing. And I think I can actually do that on Instagram now too. They've allowed the reels to be a lot longer. Oh, I I noticed that actually when I went to post something and thought I'd have to break it down and I didn't. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. it's kind of nice. I mean, I know that the shorter ones get seen more, but. Yeah, but you know what? I mean, the, the reading of the Raven that I did last night, um, it's almost 10 minutes long and but you can't it, stop it. You can't. No, no. That's when you have to, you have to hear it in full because the, because of the way it escalates mm -hmm. to the end of the poem. Um, it's uh, it, it was, I had to do it a couple of times because it goes, it gets more and more intense. Mm -hmm. And then when you finally hit that last stanza, it goes from up here to just right straight down. And trying to retune that emotion in the midst of it, it was a challenge. Um, but yeah, that, you know, that, that one has performed no better or worse than any of the other stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I seem to be uh, in that uh, 200 to 300 uh, brick wall territory. I've at this been point. stuck there too. I don't know I don't what's going it. on. I don't get it. I'll have to, uh, I'll have to, I don't know. I'll have to kind of whip out the cleavage or something. I, you know, increase hey, that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm that, that furry vest outfit. I'm just telling you. 
That is one of my favorites. I actually have it in my car right now. I brought it in case I wanted to use it for a photo shoot. And, or if I had time to do a photo shoot of myself, which I have not, but <laughs> I want to, I've been doing a lot of photo shoots. Yes, you have. They're wonderful. And this one's going to air before Halloween. I've been doing, there's a, there's a little bug. Uh, I've, sorry. It flew like oh. right here. <laughs> um, and I want, and, and the more I do of them, the more I want to do them for myself, but, but I have less time because more people see them and then more people want me to do them. So I'm supposed to do another one on Friday and it's supposed to be raining. And they're like, if it's just sprinkling a little bit, will you still do it? And I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good problem to have though. I mean, it's, yeah. you know, people say, and, and I mean, I love, I love seeing these photographs. They're just wonderful. So. I will post a couple for you guys on, on uh, Instagram, but I will also post some of uh, Jeremy's work. Uh, if you want to send me some of the artwork you want me to post sure. so that they can see it. Yeah, absolutely. I like posting little things for each uh, episode. If I remember, I'm so bad at social media, you guys. <laughs> and I, and I actually have the, uh, the one yes! that's, uh, the one that's ah! uh, going to be sent out to you this weekend. So and if you guys are on audio, this is on video as well. Uh, any of my episodes with guests will be on video as long as they have the capability and will be on YouTube. So this may be one you want to watch instead of listen to or do both. You can see my uh, goofy <laughs> troll looking face. <laughs> it's kind of fun to put a face to the voice when you've been just listening to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's been a couple of people that I had listened to for a couple of years, had no idea what they looked like. And then I saw them on some sort of social media. One of them does not do video episodes, mm -hmm. um, true crime all the time. Okay. Uh, I really like them. Um, and I finally saw what they look like because of uh, crime con, which I really want to go to, but <laughs> um, they did not look how I thought they were going to look. It's and, not a bad um, thing. It's just you put something in your head. <laughs> I think I, I I don't know as if I would have that problem. I mean, my voice is relatively it's not super low, but I mean, I'm a big guy, so it's not I, I don't think I don't think my voice sounds different than how I look when you're Unless, reading, though. Yeah. So when you're doing your poetry and stuff, the way I was going to describe it to you, <laughs> but I was like, <laughs> it this sounds so bad. But I was like, when you close your eyes, it's a timeless voice that mm. it could be someone who's in their 20s and it could be someone in their 80s. Like it's you can kind of put it together with somebody who is in your life that mm -hmm. like was a storyteller or like you can kind of connect yourself to somebody within any time like period of their yeah. life and kind of put that voice together with it. Yeah, well, I, 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 I still say that the uh, the compliment that you gave me this morning was probably the best one I've ever gotten. That was just wonderful. That Aww. was just wonderful. Uh, I know for myself, I idolized my grandfather. So, yeah. you know, that's just a, a wonderful thing. I love my grandpa. And my grandpa is my dad's best friend. And so it's very, I don't know, it feels like generational of like mm -hmm. us all being friends. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome yes yeah, so, we can dive into your stuff okay so um to preface this whole thing i have been and i still am a died in the wool skeptic um i am not super big on supernatural things you know i walked away if i was raised catholic um so i mean i walked away from the church as soon as i could um so I, i'd never really given much stock to that i've always considered myself not an atheist but an agnostic mm -hmm. i don't know you know which is fine and but there's always been some things that i have seen and heard and felt that made me wonder um one of the very first how i came to this whole whatever you want to call it spiritual awakening um getting answers and whatnot how i came to this is uh, i had had a reading 
uh, done by my friend Bree, who's a psychic medium. And it was really super accurate. And she was very insightful. So she also offers spiritual counseling sessions. So there is an answer. To, there is an answer to a question that I have always wanted. And it goes back to when I was about five or six years old. I woke up in the middle of the night. And I looked over into the corner of my room. And I saw this shadow figure mm -hmm. standing there. Now, a lot of people have seen shadow figures and even, even Brie was like, oh, you know, then she related it to an experience she's had. Um, the bigger difference was this thing had glowing red eyes. Ooh. And I was terrified enough, but when this thing opened its eyes, it was just like, okay. And when you're five or six years old, the first, your first instinct is to grab your covers and pull them over your head. Because when you're five or six, those things are bulletproof. Oh, they're going to you save know, you. Absolutely. You keep your feet underneath and your hands inside and nothing can get you. As Buzz had mentioned, the feet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no feet shall dangle off the bed. And there are there are nights now. I'm 48 mm -hmm. years old. There, there are nights now where I'm like, I don't like the fact that my foot is dangling off the side of the bed. I'm just going to tuck that back in. <laughs> yep. Same. <laughs> hey, so, hey, I'm wait. How wait? How old are you? 48. 48 sorry in my head i thought you said 43 i was like i'm the backwards number of you <laughs> no it, it, you know it's funny because all of my almost all but maybe two or three of my friends that i've met on tiktok are all younger than me um by anywhere from you know 10 to 10 to almost 18 20 years um but for some reason i get i mean you know uh my best friend meg i've never met mm -hmm. her in person i've never met her in person you know but she's you know 33 34 and yeah you know, we're best friends and it's just wonderful i mean it's, i've met so many wonderful people on tiktok i have to and, say while you mentioned meg meg is a beautiful soul she is she really is she is one of the kindest souls I have ever come across in my entire life. And I don't know that I ever will meet anyone that is more kind mm -hmm. and compassionate than her. And considering what she went through. Yes. She, she could be the most bitter, angry person mm -hmm. and not a soul on this planet would blame her. No. Nope. But yet every, every morning she gets up and she chooses kindness. I want her on here. Let's get her on here. Please. I, I would. Oh my God. That would be, <laughs> that would be amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think she would. And I think that with the two of you in the background that you both have, um, mm -hmm. I think would make for an amazing episode, but that's um, yeah. So absolutely. And I've never told my whole story on here. So. <laughs> no. Oh, I, I don't, I don't know that I could sit through, I mean, knowing what I do know and knowing mm -hmm. that I don't know the whole thing, I'm not sure I could sit through the whole That's thing in one, in one sitting because it's little just chunks. <laughs> yeah. Because it's, um, it's, cra I mean, it, that's the other thing that I've noticed so many of the women that I have become friends with. And I am friends with some amazing, uh, amazing women, uh, that I've met through TikTok and present company included. Wow. Um, it's true. I mean, how quickly did we become like, close friends i mean bestie it was like westies days. <laughs> <laughs> days it was so funny but i just it's but so many of the women that i know um that i've met through tiktok have such trauma mm. and that they that they went through and all of them are just the kindest people and it's just it's 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 truly amazing. Um, yeah, it's, it's all of my closest friends are women. I don't understand that, but we're terrible. Know, we're oh, terrible. <laughs> who knows? But okay, I'll but take it. back to your anyway, shadow figure. Sorry, yes, sorry, let's, sorry, let's, sorry. I'm a rabbit trail queen. <laughs> <laughs> Squirrel. Um, so I could pull the covers over my head. And I don't know how long I was under the covers. I didn't sleep. My heart was pounding. And 
you know, when you're, when you're five or six, you have no concept of time. So I had mm -hmm. no idea. To me, I felt like I'd been on there for an hour and it was probably five minutes. So my heart's finally slowed down to the point where I could breathe. And I slowly peeked out from under the, uh, peeked out from under the sheets along the side of my bed. And there it was oh, oh. next to my bed staring me in the face. I mean, it was probably less than less than two feet from my face. And, you know, it was instant, you know, blah, you know, pull it right back under and 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 I stayed there the whole night. I I'm not sure. I mean, that image that just this black shape with these just solid glowing eyes. And the, the crazy part about it was these glowing eyes they didn't, they were glowing, but they didn't emit any light. Oh, have you drawn so, it? I have not. And I, I kind of was thinking about that today and, and <laughs> I started to pen doodle it out a little bit. I might have to do one. Um, You might bring it to life though. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, 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 I have some, we'll get into that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get into that you guys i do not know this story so so from then on i mean that that image was just has just been burned into my memory and ever since then uh i have been plagued with nightmares um hmm. about being pursued by this shadow figure um you know i would go running and i'd open a door and there it would be or I would turn around and it's there and I'd run and I'd go around a corner and there it was. And the dread that came along with that also came along with a feeling that this thing wanted me for some reason, mm -hmm. but I couldn't explain it. My own, at first, my thought was I had come face to face with the devil. And I carried that for the longest time, but I went into this spiritual counseling session with the question. I looked, you know, as much as you can look straight at somebody through like a zoom call. Um, and I said, what does he want with me? What, why has he been chasing me for 48 years? Mm -hmm. And we started to talk about it and um, you know, she was very insightful and we, I, I, I finally, I sat, I finally I would sit there and it snapped and I went, that wasn't the devil. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard, uh, and I think people have seen or heard of shadow people. Mm -hmm. There are, and oftentimes those are equated with ghosts. Um, and some of them, that's what they are. But there are others. And what I've learned in the last few weeks is there is this entire... I don't want to say world, but there is this entire existence that is there just beyond the veil of our perception. That's what Lee and I were talking about a couple of weeks ago. See, and it, it's, it's, and a lot of people experience that, but they, they discount it. They dismiss it as sort of like, oh, it's just my mind playing tricks on me. Mm -hmm. But there are times where for all throughout my life, there have been times where I'll catch something out of the corner of my eye or something has been moved or something you get that people talk about the cold chill. Mm -hmm. um, these were deeply cold, but it wasn't like a temperature cold. It mm -hmm. was a cold that was there was an emptiness. That's what I was about um, to say, emptiness, yeah. There is that emptiness and that sorrow. And what these are, these shadow entities, they're separate from the shadow people. Mm -hmm. They are, the only thing I could equate them to is like the Dementors in mm -hmm. Harry Potter. They feed, their whole purpose is to feed off of negative emotions sadness anger hatred um you know depression anxiety all of those emotions and it, you find somebody at their lowest and when they're feeling all of these it's for them it's like a feeding frenzy mm -hmm. and their whole goal is to just suck as much of that energy and leave you empty mm -hmm. um 
So Bree and I started to talk through this stuff and she was looking at me across the video and she said, boy, you have some really strong, bright energy around you and without even thinking. I said, oh, that's my sister. Oh, I, so that brings me to the other timeline shift that I was talking to you about mm -hmm. earlier, you know? Yeah. So let's back up. I was born in 75. Um, my mother. That was like she, 10 years ago. Yes. It's, it feels like it. It might as well be. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm still struggling with the fact that I graduated from high school 30 years ago. <laughs> At least like, I was no. born. Right. Yeah. Um, it's like, guys are just babies. But um, so my mother, when she started to plan to have children, she actually met a psychic by chance um, who was a friend of hers. And um, she gave her a reading. And she said, you are going to have four pregnancies. You're going to have four babies. Her doctors looked at her and said, you will never carry a pregnancy to term. So science was saying, no babies for you. But the universe was saying, you will have four. Now, there are only... how much doctors say that to people, though, and how... <laughs> How often they're so wrong. Yeah. Well, my mother, my mother was a nurse mm -hmm. at the time. And these were doctors that she worked with in the hospital that she was in. <laughs> so they were, you know, they knew yeah. that they, they knew that they couldn't bullshit her. So mm -hmm. That's okay. Right. I mean, yeah. You can cuss. That's we, fine. Okay. okay. I'm not monetized on YouTube. We're good. <laughs> oh, thank, thank <laughs> fuck. No. Um, so that's good. Cause I have a potty mouth. Um, I have. Uh... I used to use the fake words like in uh, the good place. Oh, and then my kids got older and they started using the real words. So I did too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I just forget it. You know, I can't, but, uh, so, you know, they knew they couldn't lie to her. So they were telling, but based on the science at the time, it was, mm -hmm. you're not going to carry one to term. So the first pregnancy, um, just to, give you an idea myself and my younger sister my baby sister are the only two children that my mother has um the first pregnancy uh was very premature and was stillborn it was a girl but my mother didn't give up mm -hmm. she had she got pregnant again and that one was still very uh, premature but was born alive and because she was born alive, they gave her a name. And she is Jennifer Ann. Oh. Um, she only survived for a few hours. And then a couple of years later, she was pregnant again. And that was me. I spent the entirety of... Did, wait, did you make it? I did. Yeah, I did survive. <laughs> yeah. I did survive. It's, it's not not like the joke of, did your mother have any children that lived? <laughs> but uh, my the, the entire pregnancy, my mother was on uh, medication to keep me in. Mm -hmm. And she was on bed rest the entire time. Um, so I spent the entirety of my time in the womb trying to get out. And then when it was time for me to get out, I didn't want to leave. So ah, I you're being, Evelyn. So I ended up being late. <laughs> I was three weeks late or over two weeks late. I think my mother was like almost two weeks late. But uh, yeah, so um, I am a child that according to medical science is not supposed to exist. Wow. And then uh, uh, four years later, uh, my sister was born. Um, so... I have always felt that there was a connection between myself and my older sister, Jennifer, mm -hmm. um, to give you an idea when my, uh, when my paternal grandfather passed or maternal grandfather passed away in 2001, we went to the funeral 
went through the whole burial and my mother had commented that it was the same cemetery as where my sister was buried. And I asked her, I said, can we go visit mm -hmm. the grave? And she admitted that it had been, you know, at that point, 30 plus years, almost. Um, she wasn't sure she could find her. And without even thinking, I looked right at her and I said, I can find it. Let's get, let's get in the car and go. So we're driving around and, you know, my mother's like, I think it's over here, but it might be over on the other end of the cemetery. I said, no, no, it's, let's drive down this way. And I finally was like, stop. And I got out of the car. My mother got out of the car. My dad got out of the car. Um, and we all started walking and I literally beelined right to a grave and you couldn't from this from the road from the well i don't know if it's road but it's a cemetery yeah, type yeah. path yeah you couldn't see it and but i just knew right where it was i made a beeline right to it and i stood over it and i looked down and i could see jennifer ann thompson and I knew that she had shown me where it was. Oh. And uh, it was just one of those things where it was like, I found it. And my mother came over and we just stood there for five minutes. And both of us were just. Yeah, <laughs> it was emotional. Um, and that was when I knew that. There was, I don't know, you know, at the time I was like, I don't know if it's genetics or common energy or what, but I knew that my sister Jennifer and I were bonded somehow. So I firmly believe, you know, when I said to Bree, I said, you know, without even thinking, that's my sister. Um, she was like, she protects you, doesn't she? And again, it was just like, she always has. And, um, you know, there were one of the things that I would often experience uh, growing up and even as recent as a few months ago was sleep paralysis. Mm -hmm. and I was going to ask about that because a lot of times people with sleep paralysis are the people who see shadow figures. Yes. Even, even when awake, like not just during sleep paralysis. Yep. And there's actually a couple of different kinds of shadow creatures, but mm -hmm. the ones that generally do uh, cause sleep paralysis, um, some people refer to them, and, and I've kind of been doing some research, and I believe that these are the same thing, um, is the, uh, the hat men. They are shadow entities that appear to be wearing their shape makes them look like they're wearing like a long coat or cloak and like a fedora but very often their eyes are glowing red uh you know have you watched the show um oh gosh the the man oh god now i can't remember the family like has a manner and like things are happening to them in the show and there's a hat man in the show that's mm -hmm. following one of the characters around but yeah yep yeah i think the hat man himself is more of a creepypasta type of creation along you know but alongside of like slenderman but unlike slenderman mm -hmm. uh the hat man is i don't want to say based in truth because mm -hmm. i can only say what i've experienced myself and i don't you know there is a very strong possibility that I could just be crazy, but, um, but they are the ones that are often associated with sleep paralysis. Mm -hmm. uh, but very often what I would feel is I would sort of kind of be awake and I would feel this thing crawling up my back and then just laying down on top of me and I couldn't breathe. I couldn't move. I couldn't scream. Nothing. Almost every time I would feel whatever it was being lifted off of my back. And then there was just this sudden movement as if it had been 
either it either has somehow been propelled across the room and out through the wall so like your and sister was taking it off of you oh my sister would reach down and grab it and throw it and get it out of there as as fast as she could and i firmly believe that my sister has kept me alive mm -hmm. um the one of the things that a lot of people um and this actually is probably the first time i've talked about this publicly um my parents uh were divorced when i was five they split when i was just before i turned five and it was devastating for me um there was a lot of fighting there were times when my mother would be my dad would storm out of the house and my mother would go would be in the bathroom crying and i would literally be standing outside the bathroom door <sighs> and not knowing what to do because I, mean, I was five and she didn't even know i she only found out that i was that i used to do that um mm -hmm. last year when i told her um and when I and of course I mentioned my dad before. That was actually my stepfather. Um, mm -hmm. When I said dad, now that was my bi biological father. Um, but it was devastating for me for them to split because there was a lot of animosity still between the two of them. Um, my mom was dealing with having a newborn, yeah, with my, sis with my sister and me. Um, and I was not handling things emotionally. Um, and at one point when we had moved into the townhouse that we were renting, I had taken my big wheel. Everybody knows what a big wheel is because I'm old. We had big wheels back in the eighties. Yeah, um, yeah. I had a big wheel. <laughs> I love that thing. Um, <laughs> but I, I had rode my big wheel down the sidewalk. And when I saw, you know, mind you, this was like, I was five or six years old. Mm -hmm. Um, I saw a school bus coming and I drove my big wheel right out in front of the school bus with the intention of getting hit and killed at five or six. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing that kept me alive was the quick thinking of the school bus driver and uh, our neighbor who came and picked me up off the, off of the big wheel and, uh, ran me back across the road mm -hmm. um so when i said before about these things these shadow entities wanting some wanting something from me like i thought it was the devil but it's actually these shadow entities mm -hmm. um they want me for something they have always wanted me for something and they have tried very hard over the last 48 years because my sister has always been there to protect me, um, she hasn't been able to stop them entirely, but she's kept them off me enough that I have been able to maintain. Um, but they've always, they've been trying to get me to take myself out of the equation. Mm -hmm. And it was as recently as probably four weeks ago now. Um, I had probably one of the worst mental breakdowns that I've had in a very, very long time. And I came close. I came very close. Um, but it was my sister and um, a big part of it was Meg. You know, I spiraled and I was headed toward bottom at full speed. And I knew if I was, if I hit bottom, that was going to be it. I was either going to be dead or in the hospital. Yeah. And I had the wherewithal to something told me, get your phone and contact Meg. And I did. And she spent the next three hours on the phone with me. And she reached out and essentially grabbed me right before I hit bottom. And uh, that is a debt that I can never fully repay, but I will spend the rest of my life trying to. And I'm sure Meg says it's not a debt. <laughs> right exactly she she tells me that but i'm like mm, yeah, you're not looking at it from my perspective thanks mm -hmm. but so with that thought of they oh they are they want me for something mm -hmm. um brie and i talked about it more 
And as we talked about it more, the pieces started to fall together. And I started to realize that they want me for something. It's not so they want me for something. They want to put a stop to me. And this, this is where it kind of gets a little, you know, uh, I might be a little full of myself, it seems like, but um, <laughs> they, their mission, their whole goal was to stop me from waking up. Yeah. They knew that if I woke up, they would be in trouble and whatever was behind them mm -hmm. would be in trouble. Um, and it went for the, uh, the hat men and these shadow creatures. Um, what I tended to discover was that they were, they are essentially links in a chain going back to something that I haven't figured out what it is yet. Um, but when you do, of, when you do figure it out, you're coming back on here though. Oh, trust me. Oh, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> because it's, it's, uh, this sounds, this sounds so over dramatic, but there is something coming. No. And honestly, and it's not good. There's a lot of, I mean, a lot of people experiencing similar things. And so, and Lee and I were talking a little bit about that, of what it could be. And one of the things that we talked about, which makes the most sense to me personally, just scientifically, is there are other entities, creatures, whatever, it doesn't even have to be technically in another realm, but they're made of something different that we don't see them without mm -hmm. like something going on that creates an ability to be able to see them whether yep. it's a medical condition or something going on that that changes your perspective to be able to see them they may not see us either mm -hmm. um and some of them might have to have certain different things to be able to see us too yep. so there may be more of them that don't that just walk around the world they're not really interacting with us but we feel that chill mm -hmm. or whatever because they walked through us or we walked through each other and had no idea what was going on. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. No, that's very, very, very true. Um, I mean, it, and one of the things that I started to, what, one of the things that I realized that night was it wasn't necessarily anger or hatred or those kinds of emotions that there was that they felt mm -hmm. towards me, but there was also fear they were afraid they were afraid okay of me mm -hmm. um and again it goes back to you know if i wake up they're in trouble mm -hmm. um one of the things that i have been told i have been told for a very long time that i am an empath um mm -hmm. i literally cannot sit any if i go to a funeral uh if i go to a funeral um i cannot sit in the front I have to sit in the back because all of that energy, all that grief energy is flowing forward mm -hmm. to where either the casket or the urn or just that whole general direction of it. So I don't get hit with it. When I would sit in the front of a funeral, when I was a child, I would just be overcome with mm -hmm. grief and it wasn't and it, sometimes it wasn't even a person that i knew and i would feel this overwhelming grief that you know now that i look back on it it wasn't my grief it mm -hmm. was everyone else's um brie has referred to me as a super empath um i had somebody else recently refer to me as the most powerful empath that they've ever come across and I didn't really understood what that was going to mean. I, I could feel other people's emotions. I've always been able to do that. And it's always kind of sucked because the strongest emotions are sadness and grief and depression and anger mm -hmm. and hate and those. And when you feel those, when they're not yours and the foreignness of them is just gives me chills just thinking about it you know so i i'm an empath as well and i have found i don't i, I just want to see if you relate to this but 
when I'm feeling someone else's emotions and things going on, um, my brain and it might be the autism <laughs> tries to piece it together with something going on and mm-hmm. make sense of it. So like, if there's someone really angry, I try to find something to be angry about because <laughs> that anger has to go somewhere or like sadness too. Like all of a sudden, like other things for myself come up because I'm trying to connect mm-hmm. it to something. Yep. Yeah, no, I, I, and I, I do relate to that. Um, my biggest issue, um, has always been taking on that energy and internalizing it Mm -hmm. and then literally doing damage to myself Mm -hmm. um, because I would carry everyone else's. The goal is to get to a point where I can take it, Mm -hmm. relieve the person of some of it, and change it Mm -hmm. make it positive energy and give it back that's what a lot of healers do Mm -hmm. um but i found more recently that there may be something else that i can do with it and it may also be why they're afraid of me ah so when i got off the phone that night with her with brie um i just sat at my desk for probably an hour yes This is going to require some notes. Yeah. So, where is it? Ah, here we go. I could always feel them, these shadow entities, these hat men. They're a mix of the two of them. Um, I could always feel them around me. And when we ended that call that night, most of them, took off running like they were okay he figured it out let's get the hell out of here um and i just sat there trying to let go of it to stop feeling them around me now that they were running away and that was when i started to feel overwhelming overwhelming sense of warmth and love and i say warmth but not heat yeah yeah but care like comfort and and... exactly Mm -hmm. um and i knew right away who it was and i have never in my life given this being more than a passing thought and i'll just read you the 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 text Mm -hmm. that i have here Um, this is that's when i felt a warmth envelop me i knew right away who it was i heard a soft gentle voice say welcome home they cannot touch you anymore and this gets me emotional when i talk (laughs) about it it was gaia mother mother earth was speaking to me and it sounds absolutely insane but that was i am so solid in that knowledge now um mother was talking to me to me of all people and um there was do you think that mother was also allowing your sister to be with you too for that energy we'll get to that Oh, sorry guys sorry. <laughs> no, it's, no it's fine no it's fine um and it was just like i was surrounded by light and love in such a pure form um i used to tell people that if you ever want to know what the love of god which is an entity that I don't necessarily believe in, mm-hmm. uh, but just using it as an example, if you ever want to know what the love of God feels like, be loved by a child. Mm-hmm. Because that that child loves you in a way that is not, that hasn't been cheated. It hasn't been broken. It hasn't been jaded or scarred. They love in an unconditional way that 
only a small child is capable of. And that was the kind of love that I felt. It was beyond unconditional love. And I just, I started to cry. Um, and that crying gave away to a little bit of anger. Mm -hmm. And um, I asked her why, why did it take 48 years of suffering and pain to bring me home? And she said to me, and this is exactly what I heard. She said, my child, I did not bring you home. I can set you on the path and put people where they need to be so they can help you. But I cannot guide you directly. I couldn't even touch you or speak to you until you arrived at this moment. And she says, you brought yourself home. She told me that the only way they can get to me now, these shadow entities, the only way they can get to me now is that if I give in to fear and hatred and rage and um then she was gone and you know in that moment i felt a level of peace that i have never in my entire life felt before um the next morning i slept that night i went to bed that night no no nightmares I slept so soundly, I was just astonished. Um, the That morning when I left for work, I literally could see them. Like, as plain as I'm looking at you right now, I could see them, the little roaches that they are and they scattered as soon as i walked out the door they scattered and it's the only thing i could think of is that they scattered like roaches like you and were a light when the roaches were running away from exactly and they're afraid they're afraid of me now and i could see them um there have been times where i have been walking i walked through a store about a week ago and I could see them. And there was one that was on top of another person. I could just see it latched onto them. And I could feel the pain coming from that person. And I just was like, no, leave her alone. And it shot a look at me. Of course, I couldn't see this one's eyes because it wasn't one of the hatmen, but it looked right at me mm -hmm. and just took off. And you could literally see the change in this woman's face when it left. Like it had been latched onto her for it not only knows how long. Mm -hmm. And so what I figured out was that it was funny because I was talking to somebody about this, I was talking to Meg about it, and she was like, wait. Gaia is your spirit guide? I'm like, no, 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 she's not. My guide, my guardian, has always been my sister. Mm -hmm. When I was born, um, mother went to her and said and told her that I need to be protected that I will face some things that I need to survive. That whatever it was, they can't let me give in to what these things were wanting. So she went to my sister and asked her, she had to ask her mm -hmm. if she would be willing to bond to me and be my guardian, be my protector, my guide. And my sister gladly accepted and we have been together ever since um, she guides me and protects me to this day the um uh 
I, um, shortly after that, I had another experience. It was like two days later. Um, I have a good friend whose uh, father had passed away recently. Um, and we were talking and she had to go and accept an, an, an alumni award at the college that he was, that he was a professor at. Oh, that really soon after too. Yeah. Yeah. And I was, I started to hear and feel, and it was, and it got to a point where I'm sitting in my desk at work and I'm going, okay, give me a minute. I will tell her, but I was afraid to. And I said to her, I said, this is going to sound nuts. But your father is proud that you are the one accepting this award for him. And he wants you to know that even though you guys used to butt heads constantly, um, that he has always been proud of you. And he wants you to know that he will be there tonight standing right beside you mm. beaming with pride and if you feel a warm touch that's him and uh <laughs> she just like burst into tears and i'm like oh god what did i do did i do wrong I mean, should i not have said this and no she was very grateful um and that was the first time it, I, I had felt things before, but I didn't know what they were. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't willing to accept them or listen to them. And this was the first time that I did that. And it was like I could hear him clear as day. It's not something that I hear a lot, um, but it happens on occasion. And it's usually related to very strong emotions or somebody that I have very, have a, a relatively strong bond with. And uh, my friend um, is like family to me. So we do have that. Um, she was very grateful and I was very moved myself to have been able to do that for her. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I started to um, really think about all of this stuff. And and I've had uh, a handful of conversations with um, my friend Bree since then. And, you know, there's other things that have come up that we've kind of gone back and forth on. Um, that what is it that I'm supposed to do? I don't know. I haven't figured that out yet. Um, and, and you may also may not know once you've done it either. Exactly. Um, so, I, you know. Because you just existing might be what you're supposed to do. There, so about a week ago, I woke up the only way i can describe it is if you've seen the uh if you've seen the show stranger things of course woke, of course <laughs> um <laughs> nerd <laughs> um the all i can liken it to is what the upside down looks like in stranger things it's very yeah. dark and dusty and just looking very dead and there wasn't anything I could see, but I could feel them mm -hmm. all around. They were circling and they were pushing in, but then stepping back. And then I heard screaming and the voice sounded familiar. So I started moving towards it. And when I got into this clearing, um, there was my friend Bree on the ground and there were like three or four of these things like on top of her, just trying to suck all of the energy out of her. And 
I started walking to walking towards her and yelling at them to get away from her, mm-hmm. leave her alone. Um, two of them took off running. And the th- another one looked at me and then looked over my shoulder. And then I heard Bree scream, look out behind you. I turn around and there's one of the hat men, mm. probably a foot from my face. And it didn't do anything other than stare at me. And I could just feel the rage just radiating off of this thing. But I stood my ground. And I looked right at it and I said, I'm giving you one chance to leave. I won't give you another And that's when I felt the rage immediately go to fear. And that thing took off like it was gone. I turned around and Bree was gone. And there was another one of these shadow entities standing right in front of me. And when the, 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 I, I keep calling them the hat men, but. That's not really what they are. I just haven't figured it out yet. That's a given a visual. Yes, like, exactly. Yeah. Oh, the, the, there were hundreds of them. I mean, mm-hmm. hundreds of them surrounding this clearing. And they all took, when, he, when that thing took off, they all took a huge collective step back. And this thing standing in front of me, just full of arrogance and just this filthy just ugly energy and that's when i grabbed it bare hand like almost as if i was grabbing if it had a shirt on Mm -hmm. and i grabbed it and it started to struggle and i just held tighter and then my arm from about my shoulder down started to just glow and i could feel just this light energy collecting in my arm now mind you i had no idea what was going on this is the first time i've experienced any of this and i don't to this day i don't even know if it's real but i could feel it and i started to push forward and the energy went up my forearm into my fist and this thing let out the most blood curdling scream i have ever heard i've never heard one of these things make any noise before and it screamed and i could feel all of them around the clearing start to back away and i was just i gave you a chance to leave and i pushed forward again and all of the light from my arm and my hand went into it and it started to glow from the inside out it screamed and then it stopped and the thing just disintegrated in my hand like literally like dust and that's when the hundreds of them that were on the clearing around the clearing took off in abject terror i would too they they have always that's the thing they've always thought they were invincible Yep. And they're not. Um, Again, I don't know what any of this means. Mm -hmm. And if any of you guys listening knows anything, please please comment, especially on YouTube. We can see the comments. Yeah. And And you can email too. Had any experiences like this, let me know. Because at this point, I don't, you know, I've, I've talked about this information with. Uh, with Bree, I've talked about it with Meg and um, a couple of other people, and everyone is kind of, I don't want to say stumped, mm-hmm. but there's, it's like, as I learn more, there's just more questions and more mm-hmm. questions and more questions. And I, um, all I know is that these things are links in a chain. The regular shadow entities, these shadow creatures that suck energy, the ones that have no face and are relatively, they're only relatively defined in their shape. 
they are like the front line of whatever this is. And they are there to draw the energy off of people mm-hmm. and send it back up the chain. The hat men, these, they're more powerful. They are more defined in their shape. They are more dangerous. Um, they are the next link in the chain. Yeah, I was it, in my head, I was thinking that the hat men were kind of like management. Yeah, they're almost like the lieutenants, mm-hmm. you know, and th- that chain goes back mm-hmm. a very long way. And they, while well, they are afraid of me, the thing at the other end of the chain is not. In fact, it's very pissed off because he it was counting on these things to get me to take myself out of the equation and they mm-hmm. failed and he knows it he it knows it and is you think very, that they're very pissed off do you think they're almost more scared of the retaliation from not getting you from the higher ups i think that's part of it mm-hmm. um but now that they've had that, I can only think it was a dream. Um, obviously, I don't think I was teleported to another realm or anything like that. Um, and I do know now that what I, because I immediately the next morning uh, got on Snapchat and I started messaging Bree. I'm like, are you okay? Did you have any nightmares last night? And she's like, no, I slept fine. I said, okay, then it wasn't you. They use your image and yeah. your voice to get to me. Mm -hmm. um and you were able to fight uh, fight them in that dream which might have scared them too because they may have been having that dream to scare you away from doing things against them but then you were able to lucid dream enough that you were able to fight back even in your dream i fell back on what mother told me Mm -hmm. as long as i don't give in to those negative emotions like rage and fear and hatred and anger um they can't touch me Mm -hmm. because they don't have anything to feed off of. And the strangest thing was after I had these experiences, my mental health, now that they can't touch me, I still have mental health issues. Don't get me wrong. I'm still seeing my therapist (laughs) because I need to, Uh, and I'm still taking my medication, which is good for all of us. Um, (laughs) There has been a distinct shift in the direction of my mental health. I mean, Meg can tell you that my mental health was taking a nosedive. Um, And now that I have this knowledge, now that I have this awareness, um, it's taken a shift. Will it stay that way? I don't know, but I'm going to do everything I can Mm -hmm. to try to maintain it because what scares me is that knowledge that there is something at the other end of the chain and it Mm -hmm. is, it's bad. It's, I cannot, bad is like an understatement. It is very bad. Um, and I don't know, I mean, Bree and I have talked about it and Meg and I have talked about it, how my initial thought was, I need to wake up other people. Mm-hmm. I need to <sighs> say, it sounds so ridiculous, like gather people to be able to tell them to say, look, I'm not looking to start my own religion. Please don't say that. Um, <laughs> but other I, people <laughs> who have the ability to see them. Exactly. To fight they, back. Need, they need to know that if they don't give in to these emotions, mm-hmm. there's nothing that can stop them. There's mm-hmm. nothing that can stop us from taking steps to starve push, them. To push these, yes, to starve them, to push mm-hmm. them back, to to break the chain mm-hmm. so that whatever that is at the other end loses its food source because i don't think if this thing comes out of the darkness we're going to be able to take it head on without taking away its food so to speak um it's not the devil 
I don't think the devil exists. As much as Gaia is light and love and life, mm -hmm. we are <laughs> we are all Gaia's children from, and I don't mean just humans, from the smallest microbes all the way up to the blue whale. We are all her children. And there is things that upset her that we do that we need to stop doing and there are but she is just this radiation of love and there is something that is the exact opposite of that and there's something like as you and say that bad. that brings people to show so much darkness and like us fighting amongst each other and fighting because of invisible lines that we created and religions that we make up and just having all these excuses to fight constantly and over these resources that we've just decided somebody owns and it's just not the way that the world should be it's not exactly. the way that human humanity should be in every like I'm not going to say everyone, a lot of people's main, like when you ask them, what would make you happy? What would be your ideal life? And a lot of them, it's like to live in a community of people who all get along and have things that they all offer together and they can bring those different skills together and be successful and fruitful together and not people above each other. Yet we have society that's just based on fighting to get to the top. Mm -hmm. and there's only a couple people who could be at the top <laughs> so we've given we've the large portion of society has given it given in to greed and it's terrible it is absolutely terrible and all we're doing is the same thing that the crabs do like when they're trying to get out of the bucket they're just pulling each other down just trying to like mm -hmm. climb on top of each other to get to the top and yeah. we're no one's winning <laughs> you no i mean the, the simple fact is that if that continues we're all gonna lose mm, we're, we're gonna, gonna, we're I'm gonna play, lose bad i'm playing fallout 4 right now and yeah <laughs> we're gonna lose pretty bad <laughs> <laughs> but i had another um my most recent thing um mother came to me the other night and it was it was the night that you were going through a difficulty and another friend another close friend was going through something else I was so angry and it was like you know I really wish the universe would stop kicking the people that I love because I can't do anything about it I could you not. You think that it's partially things doing it to try to make you angry? No. Um, but I did get angry. And I ranted at the universe, at mother, anything. I ranted at my cat, you know. That's and who I, gets most of my ranting. Right. So. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Darn milf potato. I'm telling you, mine is just a little tubby potato. Anyway, um, I got so angry because all I wanted to do was to stop my friends from hurting. Going through, and it's just like, you know, as I thought about you, and it's like, She's had enough. <laughs> she has gone through enough. Give her a fucking break. And it was the same thing with my other friend. Been through enough. Stop. And I was very angry. And again, she hit me with that love and that warmth and that light. And she came to me and she said, you need to understand while I can do many things, there are some things that are outside of even my control. Mm -hmm. Some things 
just happen. There is no rhyme or reason to it. It doesn't make sense. It hurts. She said, you getting angry is only going to result in two things. You are going to let them back in, which I warned you about. And you are going to be no good to your friends. If you sit in rage and anger, you cannot help them. You cannot provide them with any kind of support or relief you need to let that go. Yeah. And essentially, mother came to me and said, will you chill the fuck out? It's just in not so crude of words, you know. Yeah, yeah. Far no. more eloquent, but but I also completely thing. agree with what she oh, said absolutely. to you because and I've talked about this on one of my early episodes that I did. Um I firmly am a believer that everything does not happen for a reason. Yes. It doesn't make sense that it happens for a reason because my boyfriend didn't die for a reason. There was no better place that he went to from being in the home with his parents. There's no reason that he needed to leave the earth at that age. Like that's just, there's no reason. There's no reason that I was assaulted multiple times. There was no reason like that's ridiculous. And for me, I'm like, well, the reason is because people suck sometimes (laughs) and People choose to do things that hurt other people. Um, I didn't do some bad thing that made me worthy of that happening. There wasn't some cosmic lesson I needed to learn over and over again. Yeah. If there's a Uh, lesson, I'm kind of tired of learning it. Thank you. (laughs) I think I've learned it. Yeah. It's um, it is one of those things. And I think one of the hardest things is that I deal with, you know, is, is not punching people that say it's all part of God's plan. God, I hate it. And I've, (laughs) Oh, is me knocking your teeth through the back of your head part of God's plan now too? (laughs) Because that's what's going to happen if you say that again. But no, and I know, I know we've all been guilty of saying those things that we feel like we should say in the moment, but they're not healthy, healthy. They're not genuine. They're not helpful. And we really need to actually start speaking like not, we didn't have to say anything. If you have nothing to say, it is okay to say, I don't have the words for the situation right now. And I will let you speak or not speak. And I'm here to sit in silence with you or listen to you, but I don't need to say that something right now. (laughs) Yes. And that's, that is a hard, that is far easier said than done. I think, you know, I'm sure you would agree that it's, it's just, you literally have to learn to do that because i mean and it's like with i know for myself it's i have that experience a lot where somebody because people feel comfortable with telling me things um and have always and when they come to me with something that's so painful and raw Mm -hmm. even years after it happened I, i don't know what to say and and you know there are so many phrases that we, like you said, we're all guilty of saying, you know, it's part of God's plan. Everything happens for a reason. God only gives you what you can handle, you know, all of that or shit. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's the reason we do it is because we don't know what to say. And we feel like, like you said, we feel like we need to say. Something. And one of the things that I have fared myself tried very hard to do less is to say that I'm sorry. That's a hard one for me. It is. Why, (laughs) why, you know, you're in pain. I'm saying, I'm sorry. Yeah. Why? I didn't do anything. I'm trying to comfort you and I get it, but it's, but it's like learning to just say that, it really sucks that you're going through this. Yeah. And I I want to help you. I want to support you in whatever way I can. Yeah. But, but yeah. And it's like all you can do sometimes is just acknowledge the terminal suckage for what it is, you know? 
I think so. I've my language I've tried to turn around instead of saying I'm sorry, like especially on videos of people that are like venting about what's going on or saying something that like bringing attention to something based on their own past and things like that is just saying you're valid. Your feelings are valid. What you went through is valid. Your memories are valid. It is all valid. And I have tried to switch my vocabulary from sorry to valid. (laughs) And that takes it off of me because it has nothing Mm -hmm. to do with me. Um, And I feel like saying I'm sorry is kind of self, not selfish, but like, I don't know, self-absorbed. Like you had something to do with it. Right. And you're like, you put it back on them. Like what you're going through is valid. And I'm here for what you need. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. And and that's something that, you know, it's like, you know, a lot of people, um, I've learned sometimes the hard way is that you may think you know what somebody needs in their time of pain and crisis and you might even be right Mm -hmm. but if they're not open to it if they're not receptive what you think they need doesn't matter you have to help people how they want to be helped not how you think you have to give them what they what give them the help that they need that they that they want not the help that you think they need yeah because maybe it is not maybe they do need what you think they need but not from you mm-hmm. which is and also that, okay yes absolutely and it's that is like you said it's one of those things that i have had to learn is to to you know even if i think somebody's feelings are to the point where they don't make sense to me Mm -hmm. that's still how they feel and the worst thing you can do is invalidate someone else's emotions and one of the things that i have tried to teach my children is if someone comes to you and says you hurt me your job is not to defend yourself your job is to acknowledge that hurt whether you think it's valid or not, whether you think there's justification where or not, it doesn't matter in that moment, they are hurting and they believe you have caused it. Yeah. And what are you winning by defending yourself? There's nothing. No. And it doesn't take away the hurt. It doesn't make them feel like you're listening. And it's so hard, especially like in the workplace, when you think that but at least for me, um, it was hard in the workplace at first when I was a manager and having people come to me saying that things that I did upset them. Mm-hmm. And there's like this unspoken thing that managers, they're just, um, they don't listen to that. You, you chose to do what you did for a reason. And so you just tell them like, that's not valid. No, I'll listen. I would listen to them. I would hear what they had to say. I would tell them, I understand why you like, why you feel that way and why it comes across that way. And you're completely valid in your feelings. This is why I did it this way to give you a little bit of context. Mm -hmm. I may or may not change what I did based on what they're saying, but at least I'm hearing them. I'm hearing their ideas of how it could change and be different. And then with all of that information going forward, deciding how to change things or if I need to change things. Yeah. Um, But just listening more. (laughs) It's just Mm -hmm. what we need to do. It's just, you should listen more than you speak. That is one Mm -hmm. of the most important things. Though I do have a joke and this is related to what we're talking about. Perfect. Um, (laughs) I'm sorry. And I apologize. Mean the same thing. Unless you're at a funeral. Mm. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to say that at funerals now. I apologize. I, I apologize. <laughs> I'm like, oh, but yes, no, this uh, uh, Yeah. But it's, um, there's a lot that I'm mm-hmm. still trying to unpack with all of this stuff, but it is opened. Even if everything that I have just gone through is mm-hmm. complete baloney, which the skeptic in me wants yeah. to say, Dude, that was total horseshit. How can you believe any of that? Um, I, 
it still has made some fundamental shifts in my thinking and how I approach other people and how I approach myself. Mm -hmm. Um, So regardless, I'm grateful for that. Yeah. If it makes you a more understanding and empathetic person, what's the harm? Mm -hmm. Either Mm -hmm. way. Yeah. You know, it's, um, you know, I I don't want to turn into like this, you know, militant agnostic where I run around going, I don't know. And you don't either, you know, do it. But, yes, you don't know. <laughs> no. But uh yeah, so that is uh that is my story and I'm sticking to it. I I like it. Um and I do I'm really curious what other people are gonna say and yeah. think about um or their experiences as well. Yeah. Because I've read a lot of similar experiences to yours. Um mm-hmm. And there's enough out there of people like even the podcasts that I listen to that have very similar experiences with sleep paralysis and seeing the same things. And then Mm -hmm. they've brought other people on that also experience the same things. And there's very, there's very successful uh, financially and also socially successful people who have come forward with very similar things as well that have nothing to gain from saying it everything to lose and nothing to gain uh, so i believe you i believe that that's what you experienced and there's something to it for all of these people to see very similar things yeah i think so well i'm, I'm happy to know that uh, you and i are still gonna be friends in the morning no no <laughs> no no i'm 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 i am i'm washing my hands of you <laughs> You, you all a little too crazy for me <laughs> before we got on here you guys uh before i started recording he's like um i just we might not be friends at the end of this because you might think i'm absolutely bananas <laughs> and and we might be we might be friends at the end of this and you might still think i'm completely bananas but, oh yes you know. that part was there too that part was there. <laughs> What a yeah! I really, really want you all to um, go on to the YouTube, even if you don't watch it on there and you listened um, and comment. Just if you've had an experience, if you know someone who's had an experience, and uh, we can also do another video if there's people who want to come on and talk about their experiences too, mm-hmm. and we can all have a chat. Um, I don't know how many guests I can have on here at once, but we can do it. <laughs> Well, I will say I have, um, I have to see if I can screen record, but I do have, um, because I am a Google one Google workspace, um, subscriber, I can actually run, um, Google meets with a very right. large number of participants for however long I want to run them. I, re- I have zoom and can record. Um, so I pay for the like business zoom, mm-hmm. but uh, Google Meets too is a go- that's what we- Lee and I were using, and there's a reason we switched, and I don't remember why. <laughs> yeah. If it works but, though, uh, yeah, oh, it was I mean, it was the screen recording, and the screen recording was weird for hers. Hmm. I think that was what it was, because on here it just records like in the system and saves it as to- as an audio and a video file. Oh, okay. And there were smaller files than Google Meets. <laughs> go figure eh, eh. but i don't know why they're smaller sometimes they're big sometimes they're small i don't know what's going on um but yeah if you guys know what's better you can also comment that too if you don't have an experience with that. just go comment okay just go leave comments and hit like and subscribe and share and <laughs> Yes, do those things too. Um, it, uh, what what plugs would you like to put in? Um, you're going to write the bio so that we have all of the um, links to everything and usernames that you want people to find you at. But uh, yes. in case they don't read that, tell us. <laughs> um, well, um, you know when I'm when I'm not um, when I'm not uh, raving like a, uh, uh, a religious lunatic, I'm on a street corner. I um I also do voice recordings and voiceovers and voice acting, I guess I could call it. Um, and you can check a lot of that out on my TikTok. Um, pretty much everywhere you want to find me, I go by the uh, handle Undead Papa, except for 
Instagram because somebody has that. So I had to go back ah. and go, undead papa519. Um but um I am also I am also an artist. Um mm-hmm. a good one. Thank you. He's gonna um, be doing eventually he's gonna do Lee and I as as monsters for our uh, frightening frauen. Yes, I love doing um, one of my one of my favorite things to do is uh, zombie portraits of people that I know. Um, one of the things that I, one of the reasons I love doing it, I figured this out on my last one, um, was that it's I look at it as sort of like the person's internal trauma um, mm-hmm. brought to the surface, but yet. Even though there there is that now that trauma sitting right there on the surface, there is still the beauty of that person, mm-hmm. also, and I think that that's, you know, I I've been trying for a long time to figure out why I like to do those and what I was trying not so much what I was trying to say, but what the art was telling me, and mm-hmm. I finally figured that out, and and that's really made them a lot more meaningful to me. Um, but yeah, most of my artwork centers around horror and zombies and yeah so that's what we uh, love here i can do i do other things too but um (laughs) um what else um i will also provide a link to uh my friend brie who is uh as i've said she's become my spiritual advisor but she also does tarot readings um and she's scary accurate with them um but she also does a lot of things uh other things that are related to um she specializes in shadow work um Mm -hmm. she's just and she is just uh, again one of those very caring and compassionate individuals who's gone through a lot of trauma Um, well if she ever wants to come on too she can be on either two crows or frightening (laughs) frowen Or both. <laughs> I, I, I will I will put her in touch with you because I think I think she would get the biggest kick out of that. And she could do even I, I bet you she could even do a a, a reading uh, on the podcast for you. Oh my gosh, that would get people over to her too. Oh, right. Pointing the wrong way again. <laughs> <laughs> this way, this way. Yeah. It's so weird. But, it's so backwards to I me. I know. But uh yeah, I I will I'll provide a link to her website. Mm-hmm. Um and uh yeah, I mean you can't go wrong and 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 also she's just even when she's doing the reading she's incredibly fun um mm-hmm. but uh yeah that's i mean i am going to be hopefully setting up a website for selling my art originals and prints that will hopefully be coming i'll have that in my uh what is it link tree or beacons or i don't know which well, one i'm uh, using at this point <laughs> one of those um probably on your instagram is it linked it, it is linked from my instagram and from my tiktok page oh good 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 Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I love to have people come and interact with my stuff and tell me what they like, tell me what they don't like. Um, just be nice yes. because, and uh, yeah. So, but no, as, as one of the things that I always say uh, when I sign off a lot of my videos is uh, be kind to each other and be kind to yourself because kindness matters. It really does. And so do you. He's talking to me, not you. All of you. Well, okay, fine. Just you, (laughs) Ty. We all matter. (laughs) Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And it would be a much nicer world if we all just took a second and showed everyone, the people that we come in contact every day, a little more. Yes. And as, as you guys know, I like to give homework sometimes. And your homework is to go and do something nice for someone that you don't know. Mm-hmm. That's something that I teach my kids. Kindness should be given freely. It can be something as simple as a smile. Yes. Uh, and that smile could save someone's life. And, and if you, you see know, someone crying on a bench, just sit there and you can even tell them, I don't know what to say right now, but I'm here for whatever you need. Mm-hmm. I think my my grandfather told me one time, he said, the true, the, the, the best thing that you can be as a man, um, and I'm sure this applies for women too, but he was talking to me, um, is well, to Well, I'm both, so it's okay. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Well, yeah, no, that makes sense. But he, <laughs> what he said to me was the best thing that you can ever be as a man is kind. 
and not just to the people you love, um, to the people who can do nothing for you, to people who you find least deserving of it, because oftentimes they are the ones who need it the most. They really are. Yes, I believe that. Mm. Oh. Lovely. You're going to make me cry at the very end. <laughs> well, I could, I could, yeah, no, what? let's not make you cry. Okay. Not, today, not this time. <laughs> well, as always, thank you all. Um, I will also link the Patreon as well as the one-time donation cash app in the description if you want to give it all to the podcast. Um, it helps me keep everything running. I don't really make much from this. Um, it keeps all of my things I have to pay for to do this. <laughs> keeps the lights on. Um, and I'm going to need a new laptop soon, so I'm really sad. <laughs> you know um, what you know what mm. message me um later okay because <laughs> i i actually sometimes can get uh decent laptops okay for... i love my i might just have to wipe it and like redo it i just every time i go to turn it on now i have to restart it like three times or it keeps giving me a black screen just Oof. my mouse i can mm. see and i have to like re keep restarting it so i'm backing everything up to like like external hard drives so that i can just in case something happens that's not a bad idea i've had people come to me like i by day i am a uh, a professional computer nerd <laughs> but and, yeah uh, i have an crazy. omen and i bought it in 2018 so it's seen it's seen life <laughs> but even 2018 there might be some things that you can do to it that might make it run better we can talk okay let's talk <laughs> Um, and then you guys won't have to donate to my laptop fund. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell them that. <laughs> to my other fund. Um, no. <laughs> but thank you all. Um, I really, really appreciate you. And I will post all the links in the descriptions and go over to YouTube, like I said, and comment because um, we want to know what you think of the episode and if you want to be on the episode on an episode or you have a story you want me to read feel free to email it to me the email will be in the description and as always crow out <laughs> <laughs>